بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله التوكل على الله عز وجل meaning relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solely is an important action of ibadah which is contained primarily in the heart meaning that you may see someone outwardly but you will not be able to tell if they're making tawakkal ala Allah azza wa jal and perhaps they're doing actions of ibadah that seems outwardly very good but it requires that other component of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Mudarik uh, Mudarij as-Salihin as-Salikin as-Salikin spoke about the definition of tawakkal uh, uh, tawakkal you know true reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extensively he said rahimahullah ta'ala in reality a tawakkal is a condition that consists of a number of matters together the reality of tawakkal will not be completed except with them all those who defined it indicated one two or more of them meaning those who preceded him imam ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala and a habit of Allah to walk along Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires al-itimad ala Allah azza wa jal wa fi'la asbab meaning that a person relies solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is an act of the heart and they do actions to fulfill that so meaning that tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an action of the heart and an action of the limbs so for example the one who wants the risk increase they want to earn money or they want to uh they need wealth they rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the halal means they supplicate to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and they put their trust in in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving the amr this this issue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fi'l asbab as the ulama say and they do actions to achieve that so if they want to increase their risk they want to uh they want to uh earn a, a livelihood then they don't simply just pray and go to the masjid and say you know oh Allah increase my risk but they strive to gain that so they go out and seek employment they go out and do halal uh earn a halal living so they strive so this is why the ulama say at waqal allah huwa ittimad ala allah wa fi'l asbab it is relying solely upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing actions taking the necessary steps tying your camel so to speak if you want a new car you don't just pray for the new car but you save your money for the new car you go and shop for the new car you look for those things you want to make hijra you want to make hijra to allah wa rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam you want to leave the 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 land of disbelief to the land of belief that relies on solely you know supplicating to allah begging allah asking allah and making the preparations working for it saving your money calling those individuals who can help you with this seeking sincere advice about this action this great act of ibadah of making hijra so it requires that you make take uh, honest steps in preparation and that's what islam calls us to Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he said so the start of that is knowledge and awareness of the Lord and his attributes so Imam Ibn al-Qayyim is breaking down to waqal for us now 
his power, his ability, and sufficiency, that he sustains and supports everything, that everything is fully comprehended by his knowledge, that everything occurs by his will and power. So this knowledge and awareness is the first step for the servant in the affair of Tawakkul. So that's the first fair, uh, uh, affair, is that you acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and sifat, things that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our razaq, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hayyu al qayyum. You know, and that he, that all the power and all the might comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So acknowledging that, that's what the mu'min has to acknowledge. That's the tawakkul. And then Ibn al-Qayyum said, Our shaykh, meaning Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahumullah jami'an. He said, رضي الله تلا عنه, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Therefore, Tawak will not be correct and cannot be imagined from a person of philosophy, nor from the Qadariya, those who deny pre-decree, uh, you know, who de de uh, deny the divine destiny, and who say that things that he did not will can exist without his dominion, nor will it be sound and correct from the Jehemiah, who deny the attributes of the Lord, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tremendous in majesty. Nor will a tawakkul be sound and correct, except from those who correctly affirm his attributes. So what tawakkul can, can there be from a person who believes that Allah does not know the details of all parts of the creation within the heavens and the earth, and that he does not do actions as he chooses, and that he does not have a will, and that he does not possess attributes. So here, Ibn al uh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, is clarifying for us that those people, those uh, innovators from the past, Ahl al-Bid'ah, wa Zandaqa, from the Jahamiyyah, and the Qadariyyah, and all those groups who had bid'ah with regards to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and had bid'ah with regards to the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they had suwadhan billah they had a wicked perception of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is they rejected that he had the power and that his divine decree that it was from him or they reduced and rejected the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know everything he created everything he knows everything these are from his sifat so Ahl Sunnah acknowledges those sifat and those are a requirement of tawakkul you can't have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth and the one who has the power and the might to fulfill everything and the one who all things are within in accordance with his divine decree. So that's what makes up Tawakkul. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was rejecting Ahl al-Bid'ah and Zandaka from the Jahamiyyah who believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sami al basir He's all hearing, he's all seeing, but without hearing and without seeing. Does that make sense? Can you say that someone like this knows their Lord? And I just had a discussion recently with a colleague of mine from my employment, place of employment. And he said, you know, we don't get into those f affairs. I gave him a, a question, an Aqidah question, and we were talking about uh, uh, the Arabic language. So I used the, uh, the, uh, uh, a text of the Salaf to illustrate in, in, in uh, a point of Arab, a point of uh, Arabic grammar. And so he read it, and he we looked into the mas'ala. Then he said, you know, I don't get into those issues. And it was an issue of uh, Ar-Rahman ala Arsh Istawa, you know, the most merciful. He rose above his throne. It had something to do with this. And he said, you know, I don't get into those issues. Allah can do whatever he wants and so forth. I just believe in Allah. But a person like this, if they don't believe that Ar-Rahman rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty, how he said that he did in the Qur'an, then how is it that they believe in Allah correctly? They say, you know, we don't want to get into these debates. But that shows a naqs in their, in their creed, in their belief in Allah. So that means they don't know their Lord properly. Because Allah gave us the Qur'an, His speech, to know Him.
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in authentic ahadith so that we would know him, so we would have some knowledge, some limited knowledge of who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. But the person who rejects this, it's as if they're saying, well, you know, I don't want to get into these affairs because so that shows that they don't know their Lord properly. They don't know their Lord correctly. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is showing us and illustrating us, and this brings it back home, that how can a person truly talk Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't know who Allah is? They reject that he is, uh, that everything is in accordance with his decree. They reject that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine attributes. So if we say Allah is al-Alim, he knows everything. They say, yes, he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Alim in the name. But, he, but we don't affirm knowing for him. So then, then a person who says this, what have they done? They've negated the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is if they, those people, they worship nothingness. Because they just worship by name, just names. Oh, Allah is al-alim, without knowledge. Allah is a sami he is the all-hearing, but without hearing. What, what is this? That's confusion. And that confusion leads to zandaka. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil until the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.